<laughs> okay. I know what I'm gonna do for this one. Hoi minute and welcome. My name is Shisha Anime and welcome back to the Fruit of Grisaya. I am gonna choose Help Sachi because I am not heartless. And I think this may have got me on Sachi's thing a little bit, but eh, what can you do? I mean, it'd be interesting to see what we do anyway. So guys, Yikimu Shoka. All right, how about I help you out as well? How about I help out as well? What? Again with this? I understand that you feel the sense of responsibility, but it's not like anyone's saying that you have to get a job done all by yourself, right? I'll take these. Preempting Sachi's response, I grab a few cardboard boxes from her towering stack and pull them away, revealing the girl behind. Maybe you're reluctant to bother me, but that's all the more reason to let me help out. He's being a gentleman. In this situation, just watching my class weight toss her off blindly would bother me a lot more than carrying a few boxes. Hmm. Of course, if you think I'd just lay you down, I can reconsider. <laughs> oh, oh. Oh. Oh, that's a quote. Oh, that's a quote. Maybe it is, but I think she could have put that in a slightly less weird way. Maybe. In other words, you don't have any further objections. Yeah. Can I pile the boxes up around here? Okay. After obtaining Sachi's confirmation, I stacked the cardboard boxes next to the teacher's podium. By the time I finished, Sachi has already opened a few of the boxes she was carrying, and is beginning to unpack the books and worksheets contained within. And why did they ask you to pull all this away as well? She's being very thoughtful. Seems like she seems like she's deliberately going above and beyond the call of duty in order to make life easier for our instructors. We really are considerate about stuff like this. She is. Ooh, that's a bit of blush. Oh, Sachi. Excuse me. <laughs> what was with the heart there? Hello. I think that's the last of it. After we finally complete our work, Sanchi straightens her posture and lowers her head to me in a polite bow. Not a big deal, but it seems we've only got another 10 minutes until the end of the lunch period. Uh oh. Missing one meal isn't a problem for me. I was more thinking about you, Sachi. Can you get through the afternoon on an empty stomach? Oh, is she gonna share with us? That's all well and good, but what she plans to eat is something of a mystery to me. She isn't carrying anything like a lunchbox. Can't I think of it, it's been a while now since I entered the school. I don't think I've ever seen Sachi spread out her lunch at her desk. Incidentally, Sachi, do you bring your own lunchbox to school? Mm, I guess curious is the right word? No, it's just that I don't think I've ever seen you eating in the classroom or anything. Ah. Damn. <laughs> really? If I remember correctly, you're always spending the lunch period reading something or writing in your notebook. Huh? Why? Um, what? <laughs> exactly. If the day ever comes that such a thought crosses my mind, I think that'll be the day I go bungee jumping off the roof of a tall building with a cord. <laughs> oh, Jesus. What are, you, what, what are you eating today then? Okay. 
For those words, Sachi slowly reaches her hand inside her uniform at the but. Uh, excuse me. Hold it, Sachi. What do you think you're doing with that hand? How kind of lunch fits in between your breasts? <laughs> That's what I want to know. <laughs> Damn it! What the hell? Does that woman intend to remake such in her own image? Is this school going to end up as a facility for the mass production of Amini clones? Well, whatever. I'll close my eyes. If you're really taking something out of there, get it over with. Mm -hmm. Would have liked to see you, but I'm guessing that's not possible. <laughs> that's actually not to close my eyes. That was quick. When I open them again, so she's holding a rectangular biscuit of some sort in her hand. What? Some kind of off-the-shelf portable rations? You bake? This is your work? Um, well, I guess, yeah, that's, that's about average, I guess so. At a glance, it doesn't seem to be much. More than a bait lump of wheat flour and butter. Let's see, this is certainly compact enough that a lunchbox isn't necessary. Ah. I would explain why I don't have any recollection of her spreading out a lunch on her desk, but... If you're eating this stuff every day, isn't your diet going to be pretty poorly balanced? What do you do for vitamins? Supplements. Uh, I've had supplements, so I know. Well done, Q. She pr produces a number of brightly coloured shortbread biscuits for my inspection. I feel as though I'm watching a baking segment on some particularly deranged cooking show. I'm a little curious about what you've got in the one named after a poisonous snake, yeah. But first of all, are these things tasty? French rations? <laughs> I, I come perilously close to asking her whether she's ever eaten uh, RCIO, <laughs> but managed to restrain myself at the last moment. Jesus. Mm, do you have enough to share? Hmm, okay. I'm sure the housewives of the world will be overjoyed to hear your discovery. Mr. Moist. Oh. Oh, what a name. What an excruciatingly difficult choice. Two of us sit on the teacher's pla platform in the otherwise empty classroom, biting into our homemade shortbread. There isn't anything logically wrong with our actions under the circumstances, but for some reason this feels less like a school lunch and more like a chow break in the middle of a long march to the battlefield. As I'm pondering these matters, Sachi continues to silently and steadily carry her food to her mouth. Maybe it's because I've been eating with Amine Makina a lot lately, but something about the situation feels oddly unsatisfactory. So... You enjoying it? <laughs> okay, yeah, I'm impressed. Put it on a shelf and I think they could pass for something from a bakery. Hmm. Hmm? When I glance over, I notice that Sachi is currently chewing on a biscuit specked with pebbly black bits. What flavour is that one? <laughs> Sesame, eh? It's pretty decent. <laughs> would you like would you like some? With those words, she casually sticks her face to my direction. The half eaten shortbread biscuit dangling out of Ah Oh! Wait! <laughs> Am I on the Sachi route now? Excuse me? Hello? Okay, well if some woman sitting on a park bench next to me suddenly pulled this sort of sun, I'll probably interpret it as an indicative of a severe chemical imbalance. But we're talking about Sachi here. I doubt she's even aware of how weird this might seem. Most likely she simply doesn't have any more de sesame biscuits to share. Are you seriously telling me to take a bite like this? Don't you want some? My younger classmate. 
offer me a half-eat biscuit directly from her mouth. Softly mumbles. Do you want some? Usually this would be a pretty saccharine sweet situation. But when she's this completely nonchalant about the whole thing, the mood is pretty much non-existent. Fine, close your eyes at least. This would be awkward otherwise. <laughs> she knew what she was doing. Or maybe you're just bizarrely indifferent. Ever think of that? Mm -hmm. I guess she does. As I'm offering my attempt at a retort, Sachi gently closes her eyes. I take a bit bite off the biscuit, carefully leaving a, def a decent buffer zone. The familiar nutty flavour of sesame instantly spreads across my tongue. Opening her eyes, Sachi asks for my thoughts in a tone of keen curiosity. Yeah, not bad at all. The simple familiar taste of the biscuit. For one thing, the up close view of Sachi with her eyes closed. For another, I don't think I can complain on either account. <laughs> Those are my honest thoughts. Okay. Honesty is the best policy. Hmm? Hmm. Now that I think about it, I've known Sachi a while now. And I didn't even know her, her unusual lunch habits, let alone her birthday. Seems my knowledge of my classmates is even shallower than I realised. Oh, hello. Hmm? When I look to my side, Sachi's watching me with an anxious expression on her face. Huh? No, I think I would classify your shortbread as tasty. As portable food goes, I've eaten plenty of truly vile field rations. It would be rude to even compare real military food to this mild pleasant stuff. Yeah, that's, that's fair enough. Um, good question. I should be used to it by now, but Sachi's perceptiveness still takes me by surprise at times. No, domestic chores aren't involved. Well, to make it short, I was thinking that I'd like to become better friends with you, Sachi. <laughs> Excuse me? <laughs> oh, my back! Oh, my. Oh. I don't think that was. <laughs> I had to expect that. Come on, me, really? I should be used to it by now, but such as talent for seriously warped misinterpretations of my words still takes me by surprise at times. Yeah, sometimes there can be a nuance like that, but that's not what I meant just now. Look, we're classmates, right? I just thought it might be nice to learn a little more about you eventually. That's all. Yep. Yeah. Oh. Okay. That a fact? There's a natural smile on snap Sachi's face as she speaks. If one of my classmates speaks those words to me with an expression like that, maybe I've gone to find a place for myself in a school? When I glance back at Sachi, she's already returned her attention to me. She's our class representative and quite peacemaker of our group, but above all else, she's something of an unpredictable girl. I'm aware that I don't understand her very well. Even so, I fully meant what I said to her just now. Everyone at the school may be a special case, but surely a little mutual understanding isn't too much to hope for. Well, yeah, I mean, anybody will want to fit in if they're in somewhere. That's usually natural. Because if you feel like an outsider, it's not good. Anyway, thanks for the meal. Unfortunately, even if I, even as I mumbled these words to myself, Amine's unwildly mass of a lunch lay in ambush awaiting my return. Uh oh. Uh oh. Oh! oh. A wild tsundere appeared. There we go. <laughs> Richard is crooning nasally to herself. It's not particularly pleasant to listen to, but then again, Harmony is one of the few forms of musical expression that exists solely for the satisfaction of her of the performer. Sometimes it's natural. It's a natural outflow of happiness in the moment of relaxation. 
but at other times, it's an attempt to calm the nerves in the moment of a, of crushing stress. I didn't know which psychological state has given a rise to Michiru's song, but I do know how I can subtly manipulate her mood. Oh no. Han and Yan Yan. I sneak up behind Michiru and softly synchronize my voice with her song. <laughs> <laughs> And now I begin to gradually alter the melody, keeping every individual small change. Change small enough that she won't catch on. Oh, I'm making that mood go rotten! <laughs> I finally caught on! She was making a happy thing sound even more depressing as it went on. Michiru spins around, flustered. Her face reveals sheer, uncomprehending bewilderment. By slowly changing my upbeat melody into a grim funeral march, I guided her own song into the same dark path. <laughs> I completely doesn't realise this was my doing. Yeah, something to matter? <laughs> oh, that's a pity. Uh oh. Anything? Who me? Like what? I've made her go from so positive to. I wanna fucking die. <laughs> God, despite its inherently subtle nature, subliminal manipulation of this sort can dramatically influence human behaviour through its effects on the subconsciousness. Subconscious, even. For example, I can persistently hold eye contact with Michiru as we speak. This can be mildly intimidating in its own right. But the effect increases significantly when I wait for her to blink before doing the same. But quickly opening my eyelids before her, Michiru would soon be under the illusion that I never blink. What's more, it's very rare for anyone to cons consciously notice this is taking place. Wow. Instead of... Instead, a nagging sense of unease grows in the back of their mind. Using enough of these tricks and outright psychological manipulation is possible. But this time, the humming game proved sufficient for my objective of screwing with Michiru. <laughs> I feel like a villain! <laughs> yeah, sorry about it. Uh oh. Oh, oh. Oh, there we go. I somehow managed to close the game then for a second. You really have to be more specific. What are you accusing me of? Okay, Michiru jabs her forefinger in my direction. Her eyes smoldering with aggression. Why get so bent out of shape over something like this? Don't make me use this bell! True. That's not a good thing, you know? Someone once said the relationships are like a mirror. Yeah. Yes, that's how the mirror usually works. Your approach seems to involve repeatedly bashing your head against the glass. <laughs> planning to go, uh, Planning to go to looking glass land? Just so you know, Humpty Dumpty's currently sitting in a cartoon movie. Wonderland. Alright, I'll give you the short version, Mitchell. You tend to treat others with all the friendliness and charm of a lollipop sucking brat who's been denied a new toy. <laughs> Stop! <sighs> My bell can't handle much more. I suppose not. If she legit carries on, I'm going to end up breaking my belt. Michiru shadow boxes in my general direction while making little kapow sounds. She seems seems she has no idea what a rolling soba actually is. <laughs> Makina. Hello. Yeah. 
training, is it? What do you have in mind? No, I am gonna ignore you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you really see where this is going? We're gonna get... Oh, no, Yumiko, I'm sorry. Makina, my friend, you seem to have equated numerical multiplication with sticking people together. Are you sure the same rules apply? <laughs> yeah, that's a good question. <laughs> yep, I thought so. Oh, yeah. Um... My mother actually sent me a nice little doll. I thought I'd show you guys it quickly. It's a little uh, Kokeshi doll. This one is known as Nakujitsu. And it's one for Happy Day, which is between the 7th and the 9th of a month. And this one was sent for me for when I won my award in the university. Which was pretty damn sweet, <laughs> I must say. So, um, yeah. I've got this as well for, uh, well, for this to cheer up my day. Why not? Are you planning on literally trying to try tying them to each other with rope or what? Might prove a little tricky. I suppose gluing them together with phonic resin is also an option. <laughs> Jesus. What? <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Megan is swiftly circles by Michida and delivers a sharp karate chop to the back of her neck. Yeah. <laughs> it didn't knock her out. <laughs> oh dear, Makina. Mm. You're both weird. Wow. <laughs> you just right here. A flying saucer? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> She's trying really hard to knock her out. Michiru, I'm growing curious about this Yao Chi you keep mentioning. Friend of yours? <laughs> oh, Yao Chi. <laughs> nope. <laughs> and there we go. <laughs> oh, God. Oh. oh, my ears. Ow, that actually hurt my ears. Usually he knows, but he's not going to do it, is he? That's pure fiction. You're going to knock out any... You're not going to knock out... You're not going to knock anyone out that way unless you get the angle absolutely perfect. Even then, misjudge the force and you can still end up doing irreversible damage. It's not something you should try at home. Yeah. <laughs> well, I guess I could have been quicker about telling you myself. Yeah, you could have been. Huh? Well, I'm sure you've heard that a blow to the abdomen can be particularly effective, but... Oh my... <laughs> Swordsy... And she's down! But as I said, you shouldn't attack someone's vital points for no good reason. You're running the risk of causing lasting harm. <laughs> oh, Michu! Nah, nah, Makina, it's not as though Michu intentionally drained all colour from her face. She's simply experiencing temporary breathing problems as a result of the sharp impact to her abdomen. Don't you have something to say to her? Getting hit in a solar plexus hurts. I think she's trying to tell us something as she isn't currently capable of speech. We should be the lips. Probably. <laughs> you 
scratch you out. <laughs> oh, Sachi. Oh no. <laughs> Sachi, don't do it. Don't do it, Sachi. No, 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 no. no. Unfortunately, we do mind. Come on, Magna. You're giving her a pretty good beating already. I hardly think there's any need to read her unconscious, is there? Oh no, <laughs> Sachi, don't! <laughs> no! <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, Michiru, but you're gonna get this. Oh no. <laughs> Sachi stares fixedly at Michiru, apparently puzzling over the best way to make her faint. Of course, Sachi's defining characteristic in her willingness to use any means necessary to achieve her ends, as Michiru is well aware. Crowbar! Get the appropriate tool! <laughs> you didn't need a weapon, she'd done it for you! Mitchell lies collapsed on the floor, her nose twitching in terror. She seems, seems she took it upon herself to lose consciousness before someone violently took it from her. <laughs> a prudent choice from the perspective of a damage minimization. Yeah, well done! <laughs> Well done! You avoided certain death. Sanchi Mitsuru has kindly rendered herself unconscious for us, so I think the crowbar tool is no longer necessary. Okay. Before you go, I've got a quick question. When you said crowbar what were you thinking of? What were you spe thinking of specifically? Good question. I <laughs> <laughs> see. Crowbar is certainly crowbar <laughs> Oh, hey, what do we do with Michiri now that she's unconscious? <laughs> oh. Sachi? She's not gonna do- oh god damn it, watch my microphone. Uh, the girl's ready for anything. Have to admit, I didn't expect her to sp have special DVDs and Zen ropes lying around. No, it's, it's scary in general. <laughs> Well, oh, wow, this is pretty nice work. Red bondage over the clothes, as well as a refined flavour, and uh, now demonetization. Um, <laughs> and you've got quite a respectable tortoise shell pattern over the basket. You reduced this fine piece of work without you for realising you were doing it? You must have seen the pattern somewhere. Either way, I think you have a definite talent for this. <laughs> Might be a potential career. <laughs> <laughs> Bondage expert, goodness <laughs> me. Make it a runs off somewhere, leaving you alone in the hallway with Michiru, who's tightly bound from head to foot in an intricately crisscrossed web of jute ropes. Come to think of it, I thought tying her to Sakaki was the whole point. 
<laughs> I didn't do it. What's up, daughters? <laughs> I thought you were supposed to be unconscious at the moment. <laughs> yeah, I guess it would be. I don't think many students would have the guts to engage in torture cell style rope bondage in the hallways of their own school. I thought that would have been part of it. Sure about that? Once Makina gets back, she'll just call Sachi again. It seems problematic in its own way. Oh, so you'd like me to untie you after all? Oh, you're being awfully polite and straightforward about your feelings. Uh, humankind's a lot is the same one. Our lives are full of paradoxes. Well then. Um, no, this happens to be Machina's work. Seems she's something of an expert. <laughs> yeah, she did. Yeah, after tormenting Michiru's body at length, Machina gave her a final few blows, then finished off by tying her up nice and tight. <laughs> oh, oh, yes. <laughs> this right here. Screenshot for this video. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You've been surprisingly innocent. Got that. Sakaki's got a point. I have to agree. She's gonna kill Makina. <laughs> well, she's not wrong! Congratulations, Makina, you flipped her psychological switch. At long last, the tree Mitchell has broken free of her Cinderella shell. And here we go. Yep. We're just gonna slowly back out of this. You probably left too much slack in those ropes. Next time tighten them up until you leave nice deep marks in the <laughs> Please! Oh yes, get a rope drug and I'm willing to bet she'll become a lot more obedient. You, you, give it a couple of years. Oh, you'll know when you see it. And thus, Makina demonstrated the brief glimpse of her hidden potential as a BDSM artist. But, uh, hey, 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 um, okay. Don't know why that happened. <laughs> But after Michiru's vigorous scolding, she would never again put that ability to use. 
I watched a promising glimmer of a rising talent slowly, quietly, <laughs> slowly, quietly fade away. Never to realize its true potential. But I couldn't really bring myself to care. The end. <laughs> um, when are you off trying to clear your name with Sakaki? Uh, Wait, was that me? That was was half base. You're planning to scum Machina, right? Oh, sorry about that. Okay, thank you. But then again, I didn't. Didn't it feel really good when she when she finally untied the ropes? Hmm? No, she enjoyed it. Really? All well, that stagnant blood laboring to circulate through your body under the pressure of the ropes suddenly surged freely through your veins? I think that must have produced at least a light euphoria as a psychological phenomenon. I myself once experienced a wave of indescribable pleasure just from loosening the belts on my arms after a pressure training session. <laughs> I just... my bell. My bell, guys. If you could just please donate two pounds a month, I'll be able to go through many number of bells for the amount of syndrates I have to deal with, especially this one right in front of me. So if you can please... <laughs> I'm gonna shut up. <clears throat> okay. Hmm? I didn't say you were. You're overthinking this. <laughs> Interesting. I see. So you're a sadist? Boys? What a hopelessly confused individual. Can't even figure out her own sexual preferences. <laughs> and I'm gonna end it here. This just feels perfect to end this part off on. Jesus, that was amazing. But I have no idea what route I'm even on, or if I even am on a specific route now. And if I am, please let me know, because I have no clue. And I would like to hear from you guys as well on, uh, well, what branched off to what, if, uh, for, what? because I want to do all the endings for this game. I really do. I love the free Grisai. I have all of the Grisai games. I want to play them. I really do. I just need to minimize the amount of recordings I'm doing now. Like, finish other series and then move on to another and uh, not have it so stressful. Because now that I'm back in uni, it's very difficult to even do other series. But, ah, oh, well, that is it for this part of the Fruit of Grisaia. So, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed. Leave a like if you did. Subscribe if you want any more from me. And I shall see you in the next video. So, as you guys. I will most certainly see you next time. <coughs> Before I choke to death. Yeah.